Hi, my name is Brittany. This is my bus, Alice. Uh, she's a 2003 Ford E450 with a 7.3 liter diesel engine. We're gonna do a tour, let's check it out. Starting with the outside, I have a 12 and a half gallon propane tank, which is actually mounted underneath the bus. And then this is the little hatch to uh, refill it. So this is an antique trunk lid that my mom's husband decided to turn into a table for me. And it is awesome. It just flips down super easy. And it hasn't flown off yet, so I think we're good. <laughs> this is a custom built door with a window and a screen. I didn't want the original windows just for more privacy and added security. And then I put a keypad lock because sometimes I'm in the woods without cell service. And if I lock my keys in here, I might be screwed. <laughs> All right, so we're done with the exterior. Let's go inside. So this is the front of the bus. I've got 199,000 miles on it so far. Uh, since I bought the bus, I've put 10,000 miles on it. So pretty proud of that. My cats like to lay up here sometimes while I'm driving. This is their little nook and they get to look out the window. Up here is a poster from my favorite band, The String Cheese Incident. And this was the first concert that I went to and I absolutely fell in love. And so that's why this is front and center. So I'm a little obsessed. I've got a Max Air vent fan that goes both ways keeps the bus nice and cool i absolutely love it this is a junk cabinet so i'm not going to open it <laughs> but i can talk about these crystal cabinet pulls that i made so basically i picked out seven crystals for all of the cabinets and drawers and i epoxy glued them onto some hardware and it just adds a nice uh, aesthetic so this is my dinette area a couple of chairs that I got at Ross, it was kind of a nice find because it was a set. The way that I mounted these chairs onto the floor is I took, I flipped it upside down and I took the chair legs off. And basically I went out and I bought a 12 inch uh, iron pipe from Lowe's and they screw into these connectors and I screwed all the way down into the floor and it's been nice and sturdy and it's not going anywhere <laughs> also uh this table i actually kind of cheated a little bit i found it on amazon and it came disassembled but i also instead of mounting the legs on i bought a marine table and it's adjustable it can come up and down and you can take this whole thing out altogether. So if you just wanted to sit down without the table in the way, you could do that. But this is a nice place to work and have dinner. Here I have all of my closet cubes and towels and extra blankets and stuff like that. I've got a little collection of books and knickknacks and hats and what have you. Under here I have a full kitchen trash, which is nice. And I also have my laundry hamper. It kind of keeps things out of the way. And so it's a little nook. I actually made this little hook to keep it from flying around uh, while I'm driving. Because I have forgotten to do this before and the trash flies everywhere and that's no fun. So this is my closet. Uh, I decided to go with fabric for the doors because it's lightweight and just kind of easy to open. And it doesn't flip out. Yes, I have a ton of closet space. I love my clothes. These are all of my hanging clothes. And then I have a shoe cubby down here with more shoes than I probably need. I also have my snowboard in here and a full size body mirror and my snowboarding boots. So this is my kitchen. I've got pantry space up here uh, with all my dishes. I have this cute little vintage toaster, which I'm absolutely in love with, and it matches my stove oven. I got this on Craigslist for $75. So if you just research and keep your eyes peeled, you might find something like that. So up here is all of my silverware and utensils. I've got a ton of pots and pans and cups and all kinds of Tupperware. This is an Alpacool fridge. Uh, it's not as expensive as the Dometic and it works great. 
I haven't had any issues. Tons of fridge space. This side can be a freezer, so it's a fridge or freezer. I just like having extra fridge space, but it comes out on a slider and it locks in place so that it doesn't slide out while you're driving. So this is my little spice rack with hot sauces and oils and things like that. Up here, this is sort of my bathroom side. I've got all of my toiletries up here. I've got a nice deep kitchen sink and I used a drinking water faucet because it conserves water and I only have 15 gallons on board and it goes by pretty quickly. I, I'd say about a week. I just use three jugs to fill water. I usually get water at Walmart or if I'm at a campground and there's a faucet, I can fill up. And then this is my uh, gray tank dump. Uh, whenever, whenever one of these gets empty, I know that this one is full. So I never overflow. <laughs> Not yet, fingers crossed. And this is actually something that I bought um, also on Amazon and it's just a bottled water dispenser and it connects and it comes with all of the pipes and uh, hardware for the sink. So I didn't really have to do much. I kind of cheated on that one. So this bottled water dispenser pump is just plug and play. You can get it on Amazon and they're designed specifically for the bottled water dispenser faucets and so all of the piping fits perfectly you don't even have to buy any additional hardware it's all set up and this that goes into the water is designed for a five gallon water jug so the top here uh, mine's a little different i didn't get the round five gallon water jugs because they're wider and this is more narrow but it honestly just sits right on top and i haven't had any issues and then this is a bathroom drawer, more toiletries and stuff like that. This is a tip out. So I put my drying mat and sponges and stuff in here. And then I have a mirror. This actually swings around. It's got, it's double sided and I can adjust it however I need to. And this is actually just peel and stick. I'd like to take credit for doing tile work, but it's just a sticker. This is a vent, basically because I have this toilet stall here and I have a Coleman Mock Power Saver rooftop air conditioner and it only blows forward and backwards. And when I installed it, I realized that there's a wall right here and all it is is cooling down the bedroom and not the rest of the cabin. The air is allowed to flow through this vent and this one, I kind of duct taped it, but I kept this one shut. Uh, but I also have these vents here and this will help kind of bring it down. And I have a rigid power tool fan. Um, it just runs on the rigid batteries and I'll just pop it on the bed and it keeps the airflow through the rest of the bus. So this is my bathroom stall. I've got an airhead composting toilet. It has a urine diverter, which I really like, except when it overflows because that does happen if you don't pay attention. It vents out to the bottom here and then you just mix the soil when you're done going number two. This just kind of adds a little decoration. I have all of my jewelry here. I wanted to display it because I like having it out. I think it's pretty and it's easy to access and I'm obsessed with jewelry. Under here, I designed a specific space for my cat litter box because I did not want my bus to smell like cat litter at all. I have this curtain here which allows the cats to kind of crawl underneath um, while also remaining closed and I built plywood all the way around so this is completely enclosed and it's already in the bathroom. I just keep up with the litter box and keep these closed at all times and there's no smell. So kind of thought ahead with the design and I'm pretty pleased with it. I've got a queen sized purple mattress and I'm pretty pleased with it. I've got plenty of room. Uh, this is the factory AC that came with the bus. I decided to leave it in because it's over the bed and I haven't hit my head really surprisingly on this. 
and it keeps it nice and cool while I'm driving. I have some cup I have some cubby space back here. It's kind of a junky mess right now, but I've got plugs back here. I put this lamp in a plant hanger because I'm not a green thumb and plants always die when I try to take care of them. So I figured it's a lamp space now. I have some artwork on the walls as well. Just some sentimental pieces that I wanted to take with me on the road. And yeah, this is pretty much it. So over here, I found this mirror at a thrift shop. It's kind of cute. Uh, I've got this little le leather envelope. It holds my mail and things like that. Actually, it doesn't hold my mail because I don't get mail. This is actually an RV bedside reading lamp. Um, you can find them on Amazon for pretty cheap. And I replaced the boring brown lampshade that it came with. And I took, uh, I found this on Etsy and it's actually flipped upside down, but it's supposed to be a tea light candle holder and it gives a nice aesthetic on the outside. Um, so I just drilled a hole in the bottom and flipped it over and then screwed it in and it happened to work just great. These I found at TJ Maxx and I just used L brackets to keep them up on the wall and I just put a bunch of knickknacks in here. Um, I didn't wanna go with full-blown cabinets because I felt like when I was sitting down in the dinette, I would have gotten up and probably bumped my head. So these are small and they kind of hold things um, without being in the way. This is my favorite part of the bus and I think it really ties everything together. They're copper ceiling tiles, but they're not made out of copper and they're not metal at all. It's PVC material and it's kind of like plasticky and it, all it took was gluing on with liquid nails and cutting it with scissors to size. It was super easy to install, it's super lightweight, and it just adds a really nice vibe. I used poly iso foam boards in the walls, the ceiling, and the floor, but I also used Havelock wool to stuff into the crevices and corners and awkward tight spaces that I couldn't cut board to size and it's worked out great you can just stuff it in there pretty pleased with it i took copper piping from home depot and the mounting accessories and i took a light blocking curtain and made it go all the way around to add a little extra privacy and also keep the heat out of the front cabin because that's where most of my heat comes from. So when I wrap this around, not only does it block the heat out, block the sun out, give me extra privacy, but it also adds a nice aesthetic rather than just seeing the front cab. The whole build process took about two years. I did a lot of work myself, but towards the end, I actually hired help and I got the custom cabinetry done and the door and the solar installed from a builder. And, you know, I was working full time. It was kind of hard to get done fa fast and I wanted to do it right. I took some breaks in between for my own sanity because I couldn't just knock it out by myself with a full-time job in like six months. That's what I thought was my timeline. And then reality hit and it was more like two years. The whole build cost in total is about $45,000. I pulled out a $20,000 loan when I hired help, and the other $25,000 was money that I had saved over many, many years, and um, I've just invested so much time and money into this bus. <laughs> so I am traveling alone with two cats, and so far the experience has been pretty comfortable. As long as you're super cautious about your surroundings, if you ever end up camping somewhere and you just feel uncomfortable, even if you can't explain why, just move. The only time that I have been nervous alone traveling was when I pulled into a truck stop and there were several other vans there, so I wasn't totally alone but there were two men in a truck that pulled in front of me with their lights off and basically blocked me into my parking space. And 
I just said, nope, I'm not going to wait around. I'm not going to make excuses for any of this. And I just turned my brights on and I turned on the bus and I narrowly got out of the way and just sharp turned it and I got out of there. It's not to say that it's totally safe out there, but as long as you're cautious and aware and follow your gut, if you think something's wrong, just, just follow your instinct because it's normally right. I do live full-time in this bus and work full-time in this bus. I do it remotely. I have Starlink, which so far has been absolutely incredible. I also have a Verizon jetpack, which is great for sometimes Starlink, you know, you don't want to whip it out and set it up. If you're just in a Walmart parking lot, the jetpack is the way to go. So I have both options and I'm pretty good at staying connected and working remotely has been pretty easy. It has been my lifelong dream to travel. Ever since I was a kid, I have dreamt about being on the road. I've even had recurring dreams where I'm just driving down in the middle of nowhere, probably like Route 66 and just windows down and music up and just totally free. And for this to all have become a reality for me is just absolutely incredible. And it took years of hard work and saving money to get to this point but it's absolutely paid off and i'm still in so much awe that this is my life and if anybody can do this anybody can do this if you just put your mind to it if you really want this life it's out there waiting for you you just have to be able to work for it and i chose the bus specifically because I wanted enough space for myself. Um, it's just me traveling. I like to be able to stand up and I didn't want to go full bus. Short bus seemed like a good medium. If I were to get another vehicle, I would probably move to a van surprisingly enough. Better fuel economy and I really don't need this much space. It is a luxury though, it is a luxury. So I do really enjoy it. My name is Brittany. I've got two cats, Ace and Chess, and this is my 2003 Ford E450. And if you want to follow my journey, you can follow me at Alice Adrift on Instagram. Links down below. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm.